thank the organizers for uh, accepting me to this workshop and giving me this chance to talk about uh, some of my my work uh, in particular. And it actually doesn't have much connection with turbulence, but I hope that this topic would still be of interest to uh, some of you actually in the audience. Uh, so it was uh, about uh, spin one uh, cold atomic uh, post gas. I'm so yep. I my uh, employment is at Institute of Physics. Uh, in Taiwan, I have a joint appointment at the Institute of Atomic and Molecular Sciences uh, with no pay. Okay. Uh, now, uh, so that's the basically what I would uh, uh, say. So, um, I think the audience is very familiar with uh, both gas with without spin. So that is spin zero. Um, now, uh, so I would uh, first uh, give you a review on the, what are the major differences between spin one and spin zero. Um, then I'll talk about some of the things uh, that is more related to my own work. Uh, one is the uh, about a uh, little story about uh, skirmion creation uh, and then uh, studying the dynamics. Um, the this part of the experiment. Uh, was actually uh, was done by the uh, I think it's Yong Il Shin who would be here probably next week, but unfortunately uh, he is not here today. Um, uh, then I would uh, also talk about spinal vortices a little bit. Um, in the second part of the talk, I will talk about uh, both experiment uh, and theory, although very brief, uh, on artificial gauging in spin one. Um, and that part is actually uh, done. Uh, uh, all, in, all in, uh, in, in our own uh, institute. I will tell you the people that are involved. Uh, so, in a, um, so start with uh, Bose condensate uh, first. So, um, for a single component uh, B C, um, uh, then you have this macroscopic wave function, uh, which can be a function of position or, or time, and of course it has a magnitude and a phase. But if you have a, a multi-component boson. Uh, for, for my case, look at the spin one. Because it is a spin one object, now the, the wave function that the boson condense into is a spin one wave function. And so well, of course, if you, I can write it like this, it's a, it's a, now it's, a, it's a, 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 an, an object with three columns, and I would have the uh, different component of this uh, uh, angular momentum projection. Uh, which I call this DM, so one scale and minus one, and each of them can be position of uh, a function of position uh, in uh, in time, uh, just like uh, the other one. And so this one would have an internal structure that is actually absent um, uh, for the uh, scalar post uh, and condensate, as you will see. Um, let me go back to the single component for the moment and. Uh, now, uh, this is what I displayed already. Uh, so the order parameter, you have a magnitude, and at, at any place like this, not zero, uh, you have to specify this phase, and this phase is going from, from zero uh, to two pi. So your order parameter space, uh, if you insist that it is not zero, uh, is actually equivalent to uh, a circle. So uh, mathematics, mathematics usually write, write as S1, this is one dimensional uh, sphere. And in this case, you have topological objects, that's something that you are very familiar with, I guess, uh, that are actually quantized vortices. Um, they are point singularities in two dimension and line singularities in three dimension. Um, you follow this path around the vortex. Um, the phase actually, for example, if changed from zero to two pi, uh, or multiples of two pi, uh, so then this mapping from the real space circle to this auto quantitative circle uh, is a topological map. Um, it is topological and, and actually it forces that uh, the order parameter is uh, exactly zero uh, right at the core. Okay? So mathematically, we write this map as pi one, of this on to this order parameter. So I map a one-dimensional circle to my order parameter space G, 
which is, turns out to be also S1 in this case. Uh, and that map is uh, 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 the, the set of integers D. And that uh, integer uh, is, is nothing but this circulation number N uh, over here. Um, for this scalable, uh, scalable uh, 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 Einstein condensate, uh, scalar BEC, uh, there are actually no higher dimensional objects. Um, if you think of a two dimensional surface mapping to the order time of space, it's always trivial. And so is three dimensional and so forth. So, mathematical statement is that you have pi, two, three, or whatever, uh, g is, is zero, except it's pi one. Now, if now let me go to spin one uh, uh, condensate, and first uh, I have to uh, remind you what are the possible uh, ground states. And that was worked out many years ago, uh, first uh, by Jason Ho uh, in uh, uh, Kasuma Machida. And the answer depends on the uh, atomic interaction, something that I will not go to, but there are actually just two cases. Uh, one is the case that it actually prefers uh, a magnetization that is as large as possible. That's so all sort of you can think of it as it is preferring a ferromagnetic stack. Um, so in the spin one object, so you so uh, one possible choice is that you have all your empathy up here and everything is zero. So that's the largest magnetization along the C direction for this particular function. And of course. Uh, if you have circle sim symmetry, then that magnetization can point anywhere you want. And then you can rotate this wave function uh, uh, in spin space and then point in any magnetic uh, direction. <coughs> the other case is exactly opposite. You prefer as little magnetization as possible. And so in the low external field, you have zero magnetization. And the, the one way that you can write down the wave function is something like this. So you can condense into the m equal to zero component. Now you have no magnetization whatsoever. And then one corresponds to, I'm just, just writing the condensation axis along the z-axis of this wave function. Now I can rotate. And uh, if you rotate, and actually um, it might need you to think a little bit a while, but trust me, uh, you can rotate into a form that looks like this, for example. Uh, where these two magnitudes are the same, there's also no magnetization. And these two are actually completely equivalent. And you can do it by a pi over two rotation. Um, actually, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, in the literature, it has been named in many different ways. You can say this anti furrow magnet. Uh, it's actually not quite right because anti furrow magnet in real, uh, in, in real materials are the one that have the spatial dependence. Actually, I don't like this. Thing too much. Um, it can be called polar, that is a history from uh, superfluid helium 3. Um, and you can also say that this is magnetic because it actually now specify a particular direction, but it has no magnetization, so the up and down are actually identical. Something that I would come back there to. There are no spaces where you can take linear combination to psi zero from psi one, psi minus one. Psi zero, psi, psi, you mean all three of them are finite? Well, I mean, those are two independent vectors, psi zero and psi one, psi minus one, right? Uh, well. So, so you could imagine that there could be some kind of rotation between them in the system. Like in pi and Yeah, 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 that's right. There's some, some, so some, 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 yeah, yeah, some, 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 you can have all three of them. You, you, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. You, you would see some, some of them later. This is just one particle example. Right. Okay. Um, now let me start with uh, the ferromagnetic state first. Okay, so the order plan is like this for its rotation. Um, the easiest way to think about it is uh, actually start in the helium three A literature. Uh, this is m equal one. Uh, so that rotational property is the same as something that is in space but not in, in spin space that has m one and m. Projection equal to one. Uh, so in other words, uh, it's like the uh, spherical harmonic the y one one. Okay. Um, for example, this state, as I should have written it down, uh, is like p x plus i p y. Um, then the other ones are uh, that you can uh, you you take that uh, 
So you have x, px, and ipy, the angle momentum is along c, and you rotate that thing. And so you can think of this as a, uh, tri a triad that you obtain by rotation of the original uh, coordinate axis, x, y, c. So your order parameter can be specified as a three orthogonal vectors that I draw like this, and I say it again, this one will correspond to this L vector along the c-axis. And the water parameter then um, is, can be specified by SO3. So you have a reference state, it's coordinate axis x, y, c, and you go to the new one, and you go to the new one by uh, this uh, rotation in three dimensions. Now, if I think about vortices, then it's actually very different from the scalar case. Now I consider the map of time one, now the real space circle, into my order parameter space is SO3. Um, it turns out that this is just C2. So in other words, you don't have two kinds. You can call it zero and one. And these zero and one obey the same algebraic rules as addition. Zero, uh, one plus one is equal to zero, zero plus one is one, and so forth. So they are only singular vortices or non-singular vortices. So it is zero and one. Further, that is different from the scalar case, uh, the higher dimensional optics are actually possible. Um, it turns out that pi 2 SO3 is always zero, but pi 3 SO3 is an integer. And it's the same, uh, it's a, uh, a scope. Um, now, uh, let me go on further uh, for the other state. Uh, the nematic or the polar state. And one of the state that you can write down is this. Remember that this component has a magnitude and a phase. Um, so this, as I said, is correspond to m equals zero along c, that is a phase. Um, so I have to specify this particular direction that it would look like this. And for this example, uh, usually the text, uh, the, the literature, the notation, this direction is known as c, and in this case, it's along the c-axis. Um, I draw it as just some bar like this instead of an arrow, but because you can always also read this as d is along minus c, but then with phases additional pi. So uh, that is uh, exactly the same thing. I can aim, have m to zero along some other direction uh, other than the c-axis, so I have to so instead of my B vector pointing in some other direction to C, I would have to do it like this. So the order parameter has two parts. Uh, one is this direction vector B, and the other is this phase. And this one belongs to the surface, the two-dimensional uh, uh, surface of the, this is the sphere, the sphere. So it is S2, and the phase is S1 as before. Uh, but there is one. Uh, uh, thing that you have to remember, uh, as I just said over here, there, um, yeah, if I write the order term as d and phi, that is exactly the same as I do minus d and phi plus pi. Okay, I have two sign changes, and then I would get that exactly the same wave function. Uh, so following the order term the space is the, the cross product between S2 and S1, uh, but then I have to identify these opposite points. And so usually uh, people would write it uh, as a quotient proof like this. Now vortices. I can have ordinary vortices where the phase changes by two pi, but in this nematic state, oh, I forgot to say, that's why it's called nematic state, because, because this direction, the b and the same is minus b, so I do, do not have to specify the direction uh, of, of, of my... Yeah. These three components you identified when you relate real rotation in space. Three components. You mean three components? These three. This three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I can I can rotate the whole the, thing in, so in, in, this in, is in space. Because it could be, for example, two components to see one with lithium, one with one with another was a gas, and the third one. Third was a gas, and I have three components. Yeah, so there's not real space. That's, that's right. I mean, I can. So I for can, you, this is important. This is the real space. The real right. space. So no, 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 no. This is, this is the rotation in spin space. space. I, if I have a both mixture, then the two, I cannot rotate these two components. 
and it is not an SU2. So, so I, I take uh, would be a, a scalar would be the BEC, uh, two different isotopes, and I mix them together. And I, I thought I have two components, but then I cannot rotate one component you to the other because they are distinct. In this case, you yeah, yeah, because because this is this is this is the spin one spin one object. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let me continue. Uh, so. I can have all the vortices where this space multiplied by two pi, but however, I can also have objects that is a little bit more exotic. Uh, it's called half vortices in the literature, where this D e vector rotates uh, half turn. So you think of it like this: you rotate all the way over here. The D e vector, if you think about the vector, the vector got opposite sign. But however, if I also force myself the face to rotate by pi, then the wave function here is exactly the same as before. So uh, this is a half vortex. So this is an allowed topological object. I have a singularity in here. And when I, I go around here, the D vector rotates 180 degrees, and the phase changes by pi. Um, but however, if you look at pi 1 of g, actually it looks a little quite ordinary. Uh, it's still. Uh, equivalent to, to the set of the integers, but except that the winding is n over two. So, uh, so you start from zero, it's, uh, uh, it's, not top, it's, it's no, no singularity, and then the integer one actually corresponds to half vortices, circulation one half, and two corresponds to circulation one, and so forth, and you can add the integers uh, uh, just like before. And in contrast to the scalar vortices, uh, higher dimensional topological objects are feasible. Um, pi 2, for that thing that I wrote down, uh, is uh, integer c. Um, that quantum number you can calculate uh, by uh, actually using this part of the formula uh, up there. Um, and then, uh, if you look at it as a two dimensional object, uh, uh, in the literature, is 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 typically uh, called a two-dimensional uh, baby square. Um, so it points. I have a simple question about the previous slide. Where uh, the angular momentum carried by those vortices is now half, or is it is the, is the spin component also carrying some angular? The angular momentum depends on the details of the on the of the configuration, but it's only that uh, this angular momentum itself is not. A topological thing so here. I'm asking if I had if I had a container of it and I gave it some angular momentum, would I produce twice the number of half vortices, or would I produce just the uh, usual number of vortices? Uh, actually, neither. Actually, because the uh, okay, I, I believe that the, the minimum energy configuration would have sort of twice the number. Uh, but each of the, ang the angular momentum carried by a half vortex is not quantized. It's quite different from the both case. Is there an answer to the question, what is the ground state at fixed angular momentum? I can continuously deform this object. And so the angular momentum can be continuously increased. And this different from the both case where it is discrete. Yeah, but that has to have a good answer, right? I mean, there is rotation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. So 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 yeah. So 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 this this configuration would start to be formed, and the angle would increase, and then it would go keep increasing. That's okay. that's that's that's, that's, that's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You see, for for this configuration here, d it's perpendicular to the plane of the slide. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just showing an example where the e vector stay in the plane. I, I'm sorry. Uh, e, it, it's, it's perpendicular to the plane. All right. No, d e vector for this joint, the d is in the plane. Oh, d d rotate. D actually, yeah, the d e vector so rotates rotate. in the plane. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, and and and, and uh, 
And so for if you try it like this, if you insist the t-vector like this, then of course the angle momentum is exactly half of the scalar vortex. But in general, it's not because I can deform this t-vector out of the plane, for example. Is there a nice visualization for this, sort of like a block sphere? But it's a oh yeah, 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 yeah. But but this is the, the thing. You can you can still think that the vector, the t vector, actually lies on on, on the sphere. Yeah. Okay. But that's, 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 that's okay. Yeah. But except that you have to remember the opposite side should be identified. Right. Uh, if you if you have sure. this phase phi go to the phi plus phi, that's the only difference. Um, let's see, where am I now? So this one is done. Uh, yeah, so this is an example uh, of now a pi 2 object, now water, not vortices now. Um, uh, so if you insist that the outside has identical wave function, um, then this is, I'm actually mapping a two-dimensional real space into my order parameter space, and this is a topological object. Um, uh, so the D vector you see that it actually covers the entire sphere exactly once. And of course you can deform that so long, so long as this vector, D vector, still point to uh, every single point on the surface of the sphere. Uh, so keeping this so number in general, two. You start vector. with the center, you spin up. Yeah, and, and then outside. Going to outside, you rotate point. it up. Uh, so you can so, so that's what is this. So this, this particular drawing is for Q1. Now this one is, uh, to, to, my, to, is to some extent is a little bit of cheating because if I draw it like this, then in real life, uh, there is no hard constraint on, the, on this thing. Right? So in, unless in, in a particular real experiment that you can pin all the directions uh, at infinity to be always found in the all the plan to be always identical. Uh, this actually is not, uh, uh, if you do not, uh, this, it, it, so um, uh, there's no real hard constraint in real life, but if you insist that, then of course mathematically you have this, this constraint. Um, the other way is that you have a two dimensional, the, the, more, the, the actual topological thing is that this is not, not the plane of the, uh, a two dimensional plane. Uh, but it's actually it's a sphere itself. So now I enclose one point. So that sphere is uh, on, on, on the surface of the sphere. That surface of the sphere is the equivalent to this plane. Now at the infinite point, you can, okay, you can think of it, this thing now is the North Pole, and the, the infinite point is now the South Pole. Now you map this or, uh, real space to my order under space. And now I map a sphere to a sphere. And of course, now you, you can see that uh, you have this uh, pi 2 map uh, to the order parameter space, and it's an integer. Now, that one is topological. Uh, uh, then, if this is not zero, that means that you have a singularity inside the sphere. So, that one uh, is a, uh, a uh, uh, let, more legitimate. Uh, uh, Definition uh, of a topological object uh, by uh, pi two pi two. So it would be a now a topological object in three dimension of the singularity at the center. Um, so that is a two dimensional surface uh, mapping to the order around the space. Or actually, there's actually a, a uh, uh, it turns out that I pi three g is also a miniature. Um, then that one is mapping like a three-dimensional real space uh, into my outer parameter space, but I wouldn't be talking about that. And that is actually the original skirmion, as far as I understand, in the higher geometry chart. Question. Yeah. I don't understand the first one. How is, I mean, if you have- First one, you mean- you know, the, Your statement that the is not strictly topological. Well- I mean, if you're in the ground- It is strictly topological only if you can insist that the outer parameter here are actually identical. But I mean, that's, is that the ground state? So, I mean, it's the same as a vortex or, or a domain wall? Um, okay, you okay, have, okay, you have okay. To have as, as I said, if, 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 you, if you can really impose that condition, then it is so if something topological. Yeah, but I'm just saying state. that in, in, in real life, then you would see, for example, the, the next thing that I would see, you would see 
I, I think it's probably hard to fulfill. You can think of this as a gimli way. Yeah. All the strings are down, and you yeah. decide by pulling one string here up in oh. the center. You see, and obviously that will be topological because it will be a localized excitation. Right. You mean so pulling? Yeah. You, you, you mean by the flop, But while everything extends all the way to infinity and you cannot, I, I, I don't understand why you say it's not topological. Because you cannot turn, you see, whatever it's in but, but that is exactly what I'm trying to say. So, so you have to insist that these things are identical. Otherwise, it is not topological. Okay. Because you I can still see. extend to infinity and you put them all down and then. Yeah, but, but that's just that you have to insist that because because if I can relax this constraint, I can turn some of them horizontal and then and then remove this topological object. But wouldn't it but, cost energy? Huh? Wouldn't it cost energy? Yeah, that would, would cost energy. That would cost energy. So how is yeah. this different from a would you say a regular vortex in 2D is not strictly topological? Or is this strictly oh this topological? is actually not a topological this is not a topo uh, this is not a topological vortex because because there's no singularity, so you go around in a circle, uh, right? Right. So you can you no, can no, no, continue to <laughs> circle in, into a point, and you do not see any singularity. It's just an energetic singularity. Like it, yeah, just the energy becomes. The energy is not singular for this one. You can make right? it to an arbitrarily small circle, it would be singular, right? You have infinite gradients. No, 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 because because then, oh, okay, but then you have to insist that. The, the but the order, the order is, parameter doesn't have to vanish. Yeah, 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 sure. Right, right. Well, but do you call a vortex in 2D, a regular vortex, do you call that a strictly topological object? Or well, topological object? objects only if, if this I1 map is, is, is non zero. I see. Right? Because that it shows, shows you that you, you, you force the order parameter to be zero exactly at the core. So here is it's not a pi 1 singularity because the order parameter is not singular here. But I'm talking about another okay. pi two, the pi I'm two. Is, so, so the difference is, here is that the order parameter doesn't have to go to zero because that's right. a topological object that's right. still that's topologically right. stable. To get rid of it, the order parameter would have to go to zero over some like region. Yeah. And then yeah. what your yeah. actual topological defects have a place where, yeah, okay. That's right. That's right. So, so that's, that's why right. I go to, if you think of the two dimensional surface rather than, than this pi, if pi two g is not zero, then you are forced to have a singularity at the origin. Or inside the inside the yeah. Now the middle picture is not clear why it's there. You see the one the one on the right is I think is the the, the typical 3D skirmion. Oh no 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 I I'm I am i am just drawing this as a map of this order of the space to be thing. I, I'm I'm not saying that the inside is this is not the real space. I'm, I'm drawing this is the order of the space. The colors in the middle one correspond yeah. to the, the Yeah, I'm just saying that this right. is the map for this this thing. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so, it's, uh, so uh, one, one other quick question. <laughs> is there a topological, some mathematical classification of these not strictly topological quantities as well? Not topological. Like the, 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 the half, the baby experiment on the left. Yeah, yeah, the baby experiment. So, so, as I said, if you insist that this is actually yeah, yeah, identical, yeah. then it is the same as a sphere, right? Because, because that the infinity point, I can always just map it to the to, to mm -hmm. one south pole. So, so then this is this 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 that's the other way. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Is there a kinetic term for the spin field? I, it seems like when you have the phase. Oh yeah. The kinetic absolutely, term, absolutely, the absolutely, 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 absolutely. So if if you have a uh, a PEC like what I'm thinking, then the kinetic term is just like this. Uh, I should make this is the mass. Right, so this is this is just the ordinary in some of the m minus one zero. So that's the ordinary to me. Just yeah, yeah. sorry, I'm, I'm still yeah. I'm still yeah, 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 yeah. Gradient, gradient in the phase costs energy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So that's right. So the gradient of the phase costs energy. You can write this as a magnitude and a phase. Yeah, the the orange, yeah, the orange, this this thing would also cost energy. I mean, the spin orientation is kind of like a phase, right? It's just yeah, phase yeah. And That's right. It's going absolutely, there. absolutely. So, uh, uh, so uh, let's see. So, back to this object that I, I wrote down over there. 
Uh, I see that I'm actually going much slower than I thought. Uh, so yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Don't yeah. worry about it. So, so the feedback as a function of I, I'm, I have, sorry about this notation. Now this is the angular uh, coordinate in the in, in, in the real space. Okay, it's a function of radius and that angle uh, is actually like this. Okay, uh, so it's uh, pointing up here. Uh, so and then the rotate so the the, the beta goes from uh, say uh, zero uh, to pi, and so that's how I would get this object. Okay, so you go start from zero and go like this, and then. Uh, for the way that I draw it over there, it's, it's identical in any integral file. If you write that out of the way function, then it's, that actually is actually, I think that understands that there is a question. But at, 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 in a general point, that is, that is the uh, form for the for the form of this. Um, and you notice that uh, usually, if you look at the uh, uh, angular momentum, if you want to, uh, so this one, the angular plus one, is a minus circulation. The angular plus one, the okay, positive circulation. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, so, so for this particular object, that actually has no, no, no angular momentum uh, uh, because these two uh, cancel uh, to each other. But however, you can also imagine the situation with now the same topology. But when you go out there, you don't know, don't know, take the boundaries like this, but then you get this spiral out before you go down. Uh, and uh, you can add these things. The D vector uh, has this, also the, the radio and the phi component goes like this. And then you will get a wave function that is in the field of like this. Um, uh, now, uh, back to. Um, Some real experiment. Um, so it turns out that uh, there are sort of ways to uh, create these uh, experiments, and that is uh, a method I didn't write down the reference actually by the Machitas book uh, many years ago, uh, but only uh, realized uh, sort of like five years ago. And uh, this is the uh, experiment by, oh, yeah, that's right, I'm going down to uh, uh, the design is actually like this. So these two colors is just to produce a field, a magnetic field uh, that looks like this. So it's just point radially out. <coughs> um, initially, there's a bias field along the C direction, which is large. Uh, and so the magnetic field is going to be all coming up. So now if you condense into the ground state, uh, then the best computation for the, uh, uh, the polar state uh, I have is actually have m to zero uh, constant throughout the whole space. Now in the experiment, then this the bias magnetic field along the C direction is turned from positive to negative. Uh, so the magnetic field total configuration, the total magnetic field is along the some directions that I'm trying to draw here. So uh, for example, take a general point here when I turn the field small and small bias field, then, then this one will try to dominate, it becomes horizontal, and eventually it will come down the space. Um, if the system can follow it adiabatically, uh, then the M vector here will just follow this magnetic field, and then eventually the, the B vector will just come down the space. Everything is okay. Except that at, at the middle, it doesn't know what to do, and that one stays upwards. Okay, so it, finally, you could create a configuration where the D vector is pointing up here, is on down there, and that is uh, exactly uh, this configuration. Uh, now, that is actually what I, I, I said uh, previously. Uh, so there is actually no hard constraint on the outside of the bond, and that's something that is actually, uh, uh, in my opinion, is sort of relevant. Uh, now you can verify whether you have this uh, 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 squaring on uh, by projecting the wave function into three components. Uh, that's experimentally possible. You just uh, measure the density on each of the components. Uh, so uh, as I said, this corresponds to this part of the wave function there. And so for the up component, you will have a hole, uh, have, a, have a zero uh, 
uh, at the origin. Uh, and the zero component, then you would have finite here, and then zero here, and then finite there. And, uh, and then this thing looks like this, except there's a difference in separation, which you do not see in the density. Um, there are, there's another experiment that you can do to check the relative phase, but I won't go into that. Uh, the thing that I want to play around with, like this over here, uh, is the, uh, the dynamics of the system. Uh, so initially, you start from this part of the thing, and the thing is whether it's going, uh, as time evolves, but this thing is uh, uh, stable or not. So um, if you, if the right outside is constrained, and now this is a topological object, then it should actually stay forever. Uh, but experimentally, it's, Turns out uh, not to the big, to the case. Uh, what they observe is that the time goes on, can something goes around this this little bar there, uh, and eventually it actually goes to the convolution where all the cloud is only in the ambient cells. So the the uh, Schrodinger actually has disappeared. What they speculate is something like this, and so in this compound final form con configuration. Uh, you nucleate two of these hypotheses. Uh, so this a uh, 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 speculation that's something not verified incrementally. Uh, uh, you see that there's a half vortex if you follow this, the feedback that exact rotated by half a circle. Uh, and then you have this similarity in the same. And so they, they, stop, they say that this thing, you would have a, a cloud like this in the end of the cell. And there, for, yeah? There is one thing you didn't describe here. What's the interaction? Because you described the kinetic energy is that, but you have an interaction, and probably yeah. the interaction is not trivial. No, no, it's, 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 it's the interaction is trivial. The interaction is trivial. I, I didn't write it down because, okay. it, yeah, so you just have this sum over psi m1, psi m2, star, psi m3, psi m4, and then you have m3, m4. Projected into total spin J, uh, M, J, M, M1, M2. And then you have this coefficient G of J. And then for dilute both gas, only J equal to zero and J equal to two are relevant. And for the, uh, if so A zero is wrong. less than, huh? Less than A2, then that is, that is for the policy. And then it's opposite is for the barrel. Well, you're going down the hard to see. So, huh? so you say that they are both repulsive, the two can be constants, right? Uh, yes, well, experimentally, both of them are repulsive. Yeah, because otherwise they would, they would collapse. Uh -huh. okay. yeah. uh, it only depends on whether A0 is larger than A2 or A0. Yeah. And they still exist in noise coupling LM. Yeah, because, because this is um, uh, the. If you do not create it artificially, then you don't, because this is actually the, the nuclear spin. It has no, nothing to couple with the uh, orbital. So what, are, what species? Huh? What species are these? It's oh, this one is for sodium. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, this, is, this is chosen for this, this part of the case. So before you go on, uh, quick question then. Why? Um, so the, this, this trap isn't completely flat. The trap, right. this is harmonic trap. Right. Fun. So, I mean, the energy then of this screwing on as it moves out, I mean, why is this any different? Well, okay, so this is um, the right-hand side is a different analysis, but could this just be like a vortex, which if you put a vortex in a harmonic trap, it's a topologically stable object, but if you lose energy in the system, the vortex will just migrate out. Yeah, so which is, the, which is the feasible. Um, um, mm. Except you can see that this is not quite what, what they see. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, since you asked that, uh, the, we, we actually look into this uh, particular problem. Um, and uh, it was done by uh, my uh, postdoc, uh, uh, Huang, uh, Chao Xun Huang, uh, back in quite a number of years ago. We didn't really quite finish this thing because he quit physics. Uh, but then I'll just tell you what we got. Okay. So I think that's, that's the only thing I can say. Uh, 
what we did is a uh, what we did. Okay, this is the gross DBFC equation. Now there's a three component of the interaction and so forth, and no dissipation. So then just ask uh, what is going on. Um, now this is what we would see in the uh, what we see in the dynamic. Okay, so um, so there was this uh, you would. In the, in the individual components, as I said, if you look at the m rule one and m rule minus one, they are actually both n type uh, have opposite circulation. Um, so then they actually precess it, uh, and they precess it in opposite manner. But however, if you if they are away from each other, then you'll go out from the polar state. So, but but it is this object that's the difference between them, which is the C two, which I didn't write down the definition. Try to hold them together, okay, so they are actually concrete. So in general, the hypothesis is not simple as simple as what she described. In general, it would spiral because it would generate a magnetization, uh, and then the T vector would process around the magnetization. So it, uh, uh, it, it doesn't preserve like this. And the, the other thing is also the kinetic energy. Once you this, you would have a ground state configuration, but then it's actually created, and that radius is not really the one that it likes, so it would try to push out. But then it's, my energy is conserved because I, I, I have no saturation. Then they would just breathe in and out. But they generate the film and they can move this like this way. That is for the shorter times. So everything is stable, although this thing uh, doesn't always want down and it will flip up and flip it down and so forth. Uh, and in the longer times, then we do see creation of hard vortices. Um, but however, at least you have no dissipation. We actually see creation and then pay annihilation. And that's something that uh, 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 we see. And then there is a need for a long time. Uh, uh, this, these processes just keep going on and on uh, until everything got into a mess, okay? Uh, so this, this is what we got. So um, whether we put in dissipation to describe the experiment, uh, I, I, nobody has, I, I, there are not much investigations out there. There are some, uh, I, I, I'm aware of that there's another Korean group trying to put the thing in there, and I think that the, I think the thing is actually not installed. And I just tell you what uh, we did. Now, uh, as I said, in general, in the dynamics, uh, you create a, although the ground state, if you, there's a no gradient and so forth, the ground state is a pure polar state, but then doing the dynamics, you actually can get out of that configuration uh, by creating some magnetization. And I have to have a way to plot what my D vector is now. But turns out that this other decomposition is unique. So think of some uh, state uh, that has a finite magnetization, and I take it along the C vector for the moment. Uh, so the wave function is actually always like this, uh, with the magnitude of a one and a minus one are not the same. So this is how decomposition is unique. Uh, so you can decompose it into a, a polar state and plus something that is, has only the component that is the magnetization along the CX. So that is a ferromagnetic state along the C superposition of the ferromagnetic in C direction and a polar state. Uh, now, with remember that the P vector is in the plane. If I draw it like this. And any other, any wave function in real space point in any particular direction, I always can do it like this, except that I have to rotate my condensation axis. So that is a unique specify that I would have a D vector to specify my polar state and a magnetization to specify the uh, different magnetic okay? And so this is the way that we would, uh, I would draw that. Um, so, um, and then of course I can also plot the wave function. Uh, I can plot the, the m to one end of the zero and minus some densities, and in the short times, uh, this is actually what we see as a three thing mode. Uh, that, that is, uh, so that is the first we create this uh, uh, skirmion thing, uh, and then this thing becomes go bigger, and then this thing becomes deeper because it becomes smaller, uh, and then uh, it yeah, is this yeah, process. So it is your initial state at no m equals zero No, 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 there is m equals zero. No, no, I looked at what you have in the previous slide. No, this is not the initial state. I'm just saying that how I decompose the thing to no, show I mean, you later. They decompose it, but there is no M equals zero. Oh, but, yeah, but that one, as I said, this one is corresponding to the M equals zero state along the C axis, but no, it is there. 
So the T vector for this thing is in the xy plane. And the direction in the xy plane is specified by the, by the red space. Oh, yeah, okay, right, right. yeah. Okay, so this is so the long times, as I said, uh, you would have this uh, creation of the hypothesis uh, now at these two points, and they can exist only when the magnetization is exactly fully polarized. So the state is fully polarized because at, half, at the core of the hypothesis, it has to be single. Uh, so when I plot the magnitude of the magnetization, uh, I would have these two points. So this is corresponding to M1, and then you have this string sort of compacting this. With a D vector, you can see that the D vector is half a And uh, so now I uh, play a little movie of what Chao Ping found uh, in his simulation. Uh, so this is the initial configuration. Uh, that's the vortex, and then you see that the uh, the uh, let me see. The, there's a x y plane is drawn with this arrow. Uh, the D vector in the XY plane is this arrow uh, pointing along the C, di C direction is the light color up uh, or uh, and, and you have to remember that there's an ambiguity because up and down is the same. So, so you see that out here is also bright color, okay, because I'm sure it's the D vector. And then in the horizontal plane, now it becomes dark color. Is it, sorry, is it important that the center of the experimental is offset? From zero here, this thing like the initial position is not in the center. I thought the illusion, or is that just <laughs> <laughs> no? It looks real. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, that, that's that's the thing. Uh, we do worry about whether it created an off center, uh, and, and then we actually play around with that for the moment. Okay. The um, um, it, it it doesn't. Do much difference if we do have, have we do not have dissipation it's slightly off because the whole thing is just still doing something. So is that just like you know, so numerical noise or something will eventually kind of kick it? Yeah, so so yeah, that's right. So so uh, the, the later the, the state of stage is not clear to me whether that is numerical noise or actually that would be the real life thing. Um, uh, so let me let me just uh, see whether I can play this you thing. Two D simulation. Two D simulations, yeah. Okay. And those arrows should just be locked. Okay, so now I uh, hope that the thing is. Is that the start thing? This is the yep. yep. So you see this thing has the uh, created, and then the D vectors are sort of flipping. Uh, okay, so it, it's so some of them has flipped up. Yeah, because it's a metal, there's nothing to really force, force them to put down. So, so. Uh, uh, so it, it it does something like this, uh, but then there's no danger because after a while, uh, the dynamics actually have to recover itself. So this has no dissipation energy. There's no dissipation here. That's right. We just want to see how how thing goes, and so you see that these the screen run things sort of would recover. So it sort of it flip down and then it flip up up again. Yeah, let's go back to itself. Uh, oh, let's see, I forgot the arrow. I cannot see my arrow, so I cannot do the pause. Uh, I, oh, I cannot see the pause. So, yeah, so, so it, it does several times. So, no, so now the, the, the uh, uh, yeah, so it, it, it goes, goes back to the whole thing again. Um, and then at some point you will see that creation of the half vortices. Yeah, right here. So this is the um, as I said I forgot I, I didn't see the my arrow, so it is the um, Yeah, so there's oh sorry, just just before that thing. So there was yeah, so there was this the uh, Michael, do you know how to, how to oh, I get I get my arrow back? Because I couldn't couldn't get that uh, uh, thing no. to
Mm. Oh. oh yeah, then, yeah, then, then I, I lost the, the part of the video, so, uh, yeah, anyway, so, so. Any PowerPoint you just know what key strokes start to stop the video? Yeah, no, initially it was. Try just the space bar. It might advance the slide, but. If, if this is PowerPoint, you can drag the. Yeah, I know. Initially, I was able to stop it in, 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 in some middle point. But so then after a while, I couldn't, couldn't see the arrow, my arrow anymore. So it might help if you look up the screen and figure out there. Ah. But then you have to do it backwards. Yeah, OK. Yeah, so that was the point that, that, that you have this. Um, I think I passed it already. What you can do is you can do, you see, probably this, you yeah, yeah, yeah. control, you see, let, let, let me finish. <laughs> Grab that point, you see, the, yeah. the, the thing, the person, do it like this, you see, by hand. Oh, I see, okay. You see, the end there. Grab that uh, and go back and forth, you see, as you want. Uh, Okay, yeah, so, so there are these places at which you see this, this uh, black thing, pair of black points coming out, and then they would come around, uh, basically, uh, yeah, probably, right? Yeah, so would, they would create, and then would come around the circle, and then show it from the other side. Uh, so the, the, the polar, completely polarized face is the one that is the black thing. Sorry, can you give me a uh, sorry? Can, can you explain a bit in a mind wave? What is the way that two of these uh, defects or this uh, half body interact? So, if it were just simple one component, we would have dipole. Yeah, yeah, they would, they would, those? they would energetically, they would, they would uh, attract each other because they want to kill each other because then, yeah, you want to have lower energy. The differences between the uh, ordinary uh, vortices would be that you have plus or minus signs, but I only have one kind. So the, the vortices can always kill vortices. Well, I, I don't have to specify the polarity because because there, there are only two kinds. There's one plus one is zero for my case. Yeah. Then 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 afterwards, then a little bit, then then it's, it's quite chaotic. You can see that uh, all the um, you don't you don't really see any stern or anything up there. So that's that's about. What we found. This seems to be a domain wall or something. But hmm? this black uh, is like a domain wall. This black thing? Yeah. Well, this is, the, as I said, it's not really the domain wall because you have to remember that P is ambiguous. Just like in the initial, initial, uh, initial square run, I have this dark ring. And it just means that the dark color means that the P vector is just in the plane, right? So you just call something like, like this, and that, that's actually being not. The, 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 to, to see the place where the polar state is destroyed, you have to see the main radiation. So it's, it's this black thing. These are the places that that is is a using the okay. You mentioned that at one point you put dissipation. I, I, I don't have dissipation. Oh, you don't? I don't know. No, no, no. I never do it. Some, so somebody this, else did. This is two couple cross plays three, 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 three of them. 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 Uh, okay, uh, I guess I'm, I'm running very late. So, uh, so uh, when should I stop? <laughs> well, we should we should wrap up fairly soon. But maybe you can give an uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I, I, uh, yeah. So this is without, without, without uh, much uh, detail. So this is the the both experiment and theory that is done the, all in Academia Sinica. Um, that is a spin orbital angular momentum coupling. Um, now, uh, actually, this is the main person uh, who is doing the work, uh, Yu Chu Lin. Um, uh, he is in the Institute of Atomic and Molecular Scientists. Uh, we have two papers, and the one and two is uh, uh, the uh, people who are involved in this or that. Um, the um, uh, uh, one person I should also mention is that there is a set of numerical simulations. 
uh, by uh, Yuki uh, Kawaguchi in my home, home university. Um, and, but I wouldn't go into that part because of the time constraint. Uh, because we, we that is her simulation just shows that there's sort of the new uh, experimental data. Ah, I'm explaining why. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly the point. Okay. So, uh, so how do you do it? And, and so that is actually another skill. Um, the spin linear momentum coupling that was done earlier, uh, uh, also by uh, Yu Jiu Ping. Uh, and uh, when he and she was in the uh, group of uh, English women. Uh, and, and yes. So the idea is just like this, you have um, just start with two levels, for example, these two. Um, and then there are two other coupling beams, uh, opposite, transferring opposite angle, uh, um, linear momentum in this case, uh, when you go up and down uh, for this. Uh, so if you eliminate this, this, this third level, uh, that just corresponds to a coupling term uh, uh, of two of the space. Uh, when, when, but when they couple, uh, there's a transfer of momentum of, in this notation is 2kL times 6. Um, so they, uh, uh, there's an energy difference between the two states in general. So that is your 2 by 2 Hamiltonian, uh, like that. Okay. Um, then uh, the spin of the coupling uh, arises uh, if you look at it like this. You perform a new energy transformation. Uh, on your wave function that corresponds to using different k labels for these two states. Um, and uh, so you remove this space. Um, so that term would correspond to the omega sigma x. Uh, but at the same time, when you do it like this, then you generate a diagonal term, which is kx sigma c. So now this is more artificial uh, spin of the coupling, coupling the linear momentum uh, and a pseudo spin uh, for these two levels. Uh, so when you do this new transformation, you transform this k square into this thing, and then we will expand this out. Uh, so um, you can do it in, with uh, three levels, for example, but the detector is the same. Uh, but what it does is that you know, so if you start from three levels with this new transformation, you are just doing a different k labels for the three different states. So you have parabolas, each of them. Uh, but then you have this coupling time. Uh, uh, which which that, which is basically look like this thing. It's just hybridization between these two. You split them and then you modify your know, dispersion uh, by uh, doing uh, by by this 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 coupling term. So that's uh, you you uh, so that if you just look at one of the particular state, then your Hamiltonian is like k minus a square around this position, and the the minimum uh, uh, or k minus k minimum square. So with this k minimum controlled by all these parameters in the system, omega and delta. Um, for our case, we want to couple it to orbital angular momentum. Uh, so it turns out that there is a way to do it. Is that we just replace the linear uh, Raman, uh, the Raman beam with the linear momentum uh, by something called the, the Gaussian Lagrange beam. Uh, this thing, the light itself, uh, has an intensity that is zero at the center, but it's finite. So go through some maximum outside, uh, but, but with the phase that actually goes around. So that thing uh, gives us the angular momentum. So when you do this transition, so this transition would uh, have some amplitude, but also import a uh, this phase uh, uh, into the coupling. And uh, so the same way to look at it is. Uh, so you have this all the all the genetic energy terms and so forth, uh, with the energy difference between plus and minus one. Uh, and uh, uh, you have these coupling terms like this. Uh, and then you can look at this gauge transformation again. Uh, then you can see that uh, you produce a uh, spin of the angular momentum now from the LC to this uh, F of C. Uh, to FC is the, the, the one minus. Minus zero minus one in the off in the diagonal component. So that that's the spin in the And this is in the three component basis now? Yeah, now it's a three component basis. Um of course the that's that's one way to, to, to say it, but the other way is, is just to keep this particle form. Um so in this thing which is just cross a particular effective magnetic field. It's not a real magnetic field coupled to the 
to the spin of the bosons. Uh, so the delta is just corresponding to a field along the C direction. Uh, the omega corresponds to a field in the horizontal plane, and the phi actually tells you the angle. Uh, so the effective thing is this. Um, and you can create anything, uh, so, so uh, not anything you want. So if the, for the, the thing that we, uh, so, so, uh, so that, so they say, delta is from the two names, so then sort of uh, fixed, uh, and the omega has this configuration that we have. So, the, so, so in general, the thing would, would have some coming up magnitude and then go to the, go to the horizontal thing when you are actually up there. So that's the, the thing that, uh, uh, can be easily generated. And by the same method that I described for, for the shift experiment, uh, is again, when you turn on this omega, again, you, you, you force yourself to this configuration. Now, except that for this particular experiment, we didn't have the thing to point it all the way up, all the way down, and so, so the thing is sort of just only half, okay? So it's only, only horizontal. Okay. And you can check that with exactly, exactly what you, uh, you expected uh, by looking at this part of the wave function, that the beta is zero at the center and then uh, goes to uh, 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 now pi the two uh, to the outside. And you can check the phase, where to phase by doing a pi the two pulse experiment and uh, share everything into the sequence between these two components. Um, that is, oh, I forgot to say. So that one is. Uh, is the starting state is zero one zero, so the uh, actually is the, the polar state. Uh, although the experiment was done for rubidium, uh, but because the thing is actually metastable, you can do it, the experiment with, within that manifold, uh, uh, doing all these measurements before it actually decay into the into lower state. It's actually quite stable. Uh, but if you put in the local, uh, now the lower eigen state. Uh, so uh, remember this rubidium just corresponds to the other case that you can't say it's wrong or anything. So locally it is still zero one relative to this magnetic field is the ground state. Okay. So that the corresponding wave function would be like this for the same configuration that, that I I I I showed before. Uh, so that at the same time it is minus one and then has some uh, zero component outside and eventually you have this into circle for the for the uh, for the, uh, this is the possible possible um, Now, uh, this thing, uh, you, this actually corresponds to a core as well. A core is not a real singularity, but it actually has a finite circulation uh, because this actually has a finite number. And that number is continuous, okay? So this is not quantized. Um, the other way to look at it is that I actually have generated an artificial gauge from the system. So if you project your state in the lowest energy, low, lowest component, uh, psi minus one, so that is for the thermodynamic state, locally along some particular direction, this thing is actually fine. And the curve of this A is also not zero. So it's, this is to generate a effective rotation of the system. Uh, it's sort of like the rotations, but not a rigid rotation because a rigid rotation, the effective this beta potential is linear function of R, but here it's actually controlled by uh, the detuning the and the coupling. Sorry, yeah. Question is, the might have been that had the same spatial front top, but no, but LZ was zero. I see. Uh, so <laughs> if not, I'm just trying to figure out what the different how LZ appears to be um, Yeah, we see. So the angular momentum would be. Uh, the so angle to, yeah, 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 actually, yeah, that's right. The angle momentum of the beam is sort of imported into the into into the system. So, so the um, uh, so if I start with this zero zero minus momentum, all the I can say that I have the spin momentum. Spin momentum is minus one and no angle momentum. So the this, the the coupling that I introduce is basically you put this thing into the other. Spin component, the, the spin angle momentum is changed, but I also simultaneously change the angle momentum. Yeah. yeah. But you don't necessarily have to have LZ equal zero to still get some. Oh, but LZ equal zero was, was the last page. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that was the starting state with, with this thing. Uh, so, so that one would have LZ equal zero. Yeah, so this, this part is starting from now the 
n to the minus one. Uh, oh, uh, so that's the the that's the that's the equation of the uh, cortex vortex, and uh, you can also produce the singular vortices. Um, so this is uh, done by cooling down from the normal state, uh, so the system would look for its ground state. Uh, so uh, if you have a large uh, negative cooling. <coughs> Uh, it's clear that all the, the particles would like to go to this m to minus one, and this uh, large negative to make all of them would go to this m to plus one. Um, and of course, as I said, in general, it actually has all three components uh, uh, mixing into quite a very finite uh, uh, Raman, uh, Rabi coupling omega. Uh, but if you do it with near the speed, the uh, Zero B tuning, uh, the ground state is actually this one. So we would have the uh, the annual zero component have no separation. Uh, if these two actually have opposite. <coughs> uh, so uh, so this is uh, experimentally uh, uh, what is shown here. So that's uh, uh, yeah. So you have these three configuration according to uh, which kind of B tuning uh, that you apply. Um, so this uh, so that is to obtain a uh, a uh, ground state or the circulation number uh, that depends on uh, the strength of the artificial gauge that we actually put in. Uh, and that is similar to a very old experiment by uh, Hessian flashback where the angle momentum of the, now uh, that is for the helium four superfluid, uh, actually depends on the, uh, uh, the rate at which you rotate the container. Uh, that's the ground state uh, you obtain. Uh, for the cool down, different cool downs. Okay, uh, that's it. So, uh, so the next, so we now have uh, different kind of topological objects. Uh, now there is only uh, sort of one of them every single time, and uh, we expect that we can actually do multiple of them, uh, and then play around with it, and uh, just to the plan in the future. Okay, that's it. Sorry for taking so long. Thank you. Any further questions? In this treatment, total density is constant as a function of position. The density is basically is constant, I understand, right? Total density by some of the whole density. It's close to a constant because only because in in real life, in these experiments, the differences between these two are small. Uh, no, compared with the absolute value. The way you parallel factors. So you're probably getting very meaningful. No, no, no. No, because because you can rewrite this as a density, density coupling and a spin spin coupling. No, I and some of the components, the projection of the spin. Total density. Yeah. So total density. Total density, density is probably. It's not a concert. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. It's not a concert. It's not a real concert. It's a good approximation. It's a concert only because this difference is very small. No, but it looks to me that what you simulate is always constant. Because I look at the wind functions. Yeah, yeah. I am saying that is a very good approximation because this thing, this difference is very small. So yeah. I think it allows for the amplitude. Yeah, the amplitude will fluctuate. fluctuate. The amplitude will fluctuate. Yeah. Because the, no, but phase, but then the wave function is not that one, which is right. right. so that, that's so, yeah. the phase part. No, it's not a phase part. Say, say it again. Which, so which, the wave which, function which, which you write picture? down. Which put the wave function way back. Yeah. It's yeah. a depth function. Oh, but I didn't write down the overall yeah. end of your. Oh, that, yeah. that's, that's what I'm asking. Yes. Yeah. In, in general, it's not a constant. In general, it's not a constant. Okay. But it's a very good approximation that is a constant because this difference is very small. Yeah. Okay, so so the system is almost S U three in there. Okay. No, I yeah. 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 But in general, it doesn't happen. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions? So, okay, we can continue discussions okay. at two three this afternoon. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm.